Yeah, the other big area then say that we have in the in the tools is our view for plans, right? So we we can add a new can, plan. Can, can here. you talk? Can you talk through plans really quickly? Like what are plans? Uh, high level. OK, then. So the, the idea of a plan is that you have there's something you want to achieve, um, so, so something that you want the AI to um, be able to do for you. And, you know, when you run a prompt, it's kind of like a one shot thing, right? Here's my prompt, like it's like a Q question answer type thing, right? So here's my question. I get my answer back, right? But um, some of the things that you want to do will require multiple steps to achieve. So if we think about the, uh, you know, the example of I want to kind of like, you know, get the last number of um, emails from my inbox and then I want to summarize them and I might want to generate to do's out of the summary and then create tasks. Right. So that's a number of steps. Right. So when you think kind of like, like if I was actually to do that work myself, one of the things I need to be able to do is kind of go to my email, you know, grab all the content. Um, then I need to do the summarization. That's what I'm going to re um, rely on the AI to do. Then generating tasks. That's something I'm going to rely on the AI to do. And then create the tasks in Planner or something like that, right? So, and that's a more of a native type function, right? So with a plan, what we could do is we could say, this is my overall ask. This is what I want to achieve. Here's a set of skills that are available for you to um, achieve that objective. And then we can pass all this information to the AI and the AI will give us a plan. So it'll give us a set of steps that we can execute in order to achieve my, my objective, right? And we can interleave AI related functionality with native functionality together um, to achieve my goal, right? So in my particular workspace, the skills that I have available are all fun skills. Like, so I can do generate excuses, generate jokes, generate limericks. So the plan that I've, I'm gonna show is what I want to do is I want to create an excuse for why I'm late, and then I want to um, create a joke about it, right? Um, so that's my ask to the AI, and you know, and th these are the skills that I have available. So I tell the, I'm going to tell the planner these are the skills to use, and it's generated this plan for me, right? So the first plan is to use the excuses skill to generate an excuse, and then use the joke skill um, to generate a joke, right? So, um, so when I go to kind of you know, create this. We have a little UI, so it guides you through the process of you specify where you want your plan to be located. Um, then you specify what your ask for the particular plan is, and then you specify what skills you want to use, right? So yeah, so this is one that I, I created earlier on. It's generated the plan for me. Now, if I go and execute that plan, um, I can actually try it out here. I can I actually test it and see see what's, what's going to happen and, and see what the um, the output of each stage is, right? So it's executed the first step, which is to generate an excuse. And now it's um, looking at generating a, a joke based on that. If we look at the, the state, um, this shows basically what the planner's done, right? This is my excuse. You know, my alarm clock was kidnapped by ninjas. And then, um, you know, this is the joke, right? So this isn't really great, right? Um, and this is a this is a good example of kind of like you know where why where models are important right so let's change to text da vinci um zero three and i'm going to start over again and and, and run the plan again again so it's generated my uh, excuse um so this time this excuse is a little bit more um creative right um so i'm fighting off a horde of zombie squirrels and then it, it's generating a a joke about this, right? So, and now we've got a whole little story here, right? So, a boss is frustrated by an employee who's always late to work. Yeah, yeah, maybe this will get me out of trouble for coming in late to work, right? Yeah. So, so you can see here where the planner, now, and this is just purely using all semantic skills. So it's, you know, 100% relying on the AI. But you could have native skills in in here as well, so you can perform kind of like you know concrete ap actions. Um. And again, this is kind of like quite accessible because you do everything through uh, through UI or whatever, right? So okay. when you go through the flow of creating this plan, I, I heard you say you, you specify like a plan folder where, to, where you're storing this. Uh, I see this is like a JSON file, I guess, representative of what the plan looks like. 
do we have the ability because I know that there are other plans or planners inside the kernel. Is that a another way you could specify uh, or is that configurable also to choose which plan you want to use? Um, yeah, yeah, so 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 not not right now, like we're just purely using the the sequential planner. I know there was a, a recent interview around the um, the stepwise planner, right? So that's yeah, that's something that that will come will be coming soon or whatever, like, you know, but we're not we're a little bit behind like the the stepwise planner stuff has just really landed now. Uh, yeah, we can we can talk a little bit later on about kind of like, you know, future plans where, where we want to go to next. You know, so, um, Very good. Very good. Last view, actually. You know, this is a very simple one. It's basically just some helpful links, right? So if you want to get access to our documentation, um, our Discord community learning, you know, GitHub resources, all that type of stuff, we have all of those links there just to make them make them accessible. And um, in the in our Discord community, we have a section for the VS Code extension. So that's a good place to kind of like go to get um, questions answered. And are there ways on GitHub? directly? Is there, is there a tag or something that people can mark uh, with issues if they want to give feedback to for this um, VS Code extension? Yeah, so you can post issues in the main semantic kernel repository. Um, they're all being triaged. Um, and I'm not 100% sure if there's a tag, but I'm definitely I definitely get notified by our our PMs if there's any issues kind of come up with the um, with the VS Code extension like, you know, so that's a good place either Discord or the main um, GitHub repository. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so yeah. submit your feedback to Discord, to GitHub. Uh, Mark and the team can move very quickly to to bring these uh, features in. Mark, do you want to talk maybe high level of what is maybe on the near term roadmap for the future of the VS Code extension? Um, sure, yeah. Yeah, so the, the initial focus I mentioned was really about, you know, helping people to kind of get started, right? Um, now, the the ongoing focus or the next thing we're going to focus on is um, helping people who are building applications and taking applications to production. So um, at the moment, like, you know, a lot of the time you, you might spend it in this particular view, kind of navigating through stuff. But what we want to do is we want to kind of like, you know, move the tooling so it fits in better with the developers kind of like inner loop, right? So, um, so there's a couple of artifacts. There's your prompts and your plans, right? So they're going to, if I go back to my Explorer view, they're in here as kind of like, you know, different um, different JSON files. And what we want to do is everything is accessible from here. Um, we, we want to improve the support we have for creating prompts. Um, we're, we're in kind of like, we're talking to the other teams within Microsoft who are building tooling, like the prompt flow team. Um, There's the team who are building Microsoft guidance. And what we want to do is trying to make sure that everything we build works very, very well together. Like, you know, so there's a very seamless experience when you use the different tools together. And the prompt flow guys are moving to a code first type experience. So um, they want things to appear, start appearing in VS Code and everything should work well with, with our extension then as well. The other thing we want to do on kind of like, you know, we've done some very basic stuff in the in the results view, right? So I can see all of my um, result executions, but we want to do some work so that we can actually compare executions and actually give you some indicators as to whether a result was good or bad, right? Like, you know, I mean, here it's a little bit subjective. Um, you know, I just basically kind of like look at the text or whatever, and I need to remember um, where things were, but we want to allow the prompt flow team have done some really interesting work with with testing prompts. And we want to kind of bring that together with what we're doing as well, so that our results and their testing tools can also all work for, um, very seamlessly together. Um, there's a lot we want to do on the on the planner integration, right? So we want to support the other planner types. Um, we also want to improve the experience here, like you know, when I preview a plan um, as I step through the plan, right? Like you know, so when I ran the plan earlier on, you saw that we had state that was kind of captured. But we'd like you to be able to kind of like, you know, step through the plan, see the state at each point. And then, you know, because if a plan has kind of gone wrong or it's, or it's gone off the rails, you want to be able to identify when that happened and take correct, corrective action there. Right. So we want to improve the tooling around around that as well. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of um, a lot of interesting work, a lot of discussions going on um, across Microsoft at the moment. It's actually a really good time 
um, to provide feedback, right? Like, you know, so if you play around with the um, with the extension, if there's anything you'd like to see, you know, let us know and um, we can start to incorporate that in our, our next round of planning. Awesome. Well, it sounds like there are some very great things that are happening uh, in the near term horizon. Uh, but what's great about us being open source is that it's very much a a community driven effort as well. So as Mark said, if you want to see new features or specific things show up, particularly inside this VS Code extension, as mentioned, uh, join the, the Discord, the GitHub uh, and and provide that feedback there. Mark, any last parting words, at least any advice for people who are kind of just getting into AI and how they can you know, accelerate their own journey with, with Semantic Kernel, with these tools, or even just your own experiences? Uh, there's a lot of interesting work going on in, in planning. I, I think the previous session that you did with Lee, if people haven't seen that, I, I'd recommend that they take a look at that. Um, you know, Lee mentioned some papers that have been published around the area of planning it's worth looking at that stuff. Um, there is a an open source project Microsoft have called Microsoft Guidance, and that's a prompt engineering on steroids type type thing. Like what they what they've done there is really really impressive, and it starts to show the real power behind um, prompt engineering. Like you know, there's some really complicated um, scenarios that you can by crafting your prompts um, carefully, you can do some very very impressive stuff. Uh, and that, you know, I know that team is kind of like looking to integrate with the semantic kernel. So I'd advise people to take a look at that. Like, you know, it's, um, I suppose, as you well know, like, you know, things are changing really, really fast, right? But um, actually your curated list of um, open source projects and your chow down, um, <laughs> I, I definitely recommend people take a, take a look at that as well, you know? So. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Link in the description for for my newsletter. Yeah. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for the time, Mark. Uh, really appreciate it, and certainly looking forward to the latest and greatest that uh, will be coming out from from you and from the rest of the team. Okay. Yeah. Th thanks very much, Alex.